So now we're going to come back um, from Brooklyn and Long Island, and we're going to go across the Hudson to Jersey City, um, which is an eight-minute ride by ferry uh, from Battery Park um, City. And so it's very accessible, and you can also get there on the PATH train in about three minutes from the World Trade Center. So it's a very interesting place. Before I started looking at this four years ago, when I started working with Argent to do their market assessment, um, I didn't realize what was actually in Jersey City and how attractive it was as a place, especially for life science and tech um, in uh, near New York. You heard uh, Jersey City Economic Development this morning talk about the rezoning that they engaged in several years ago, which essentially created a 40-acre corridor, science and technology corridor, that's bounded by um, a medical center, which is expanding. Uh, and so all of this ground-up construction is going on in a very short period of time in one of the only ground-up live, work, play environments uh, in Manhattan. So that's why this is so special. It's a really unique. And we are going to talk about two of the developments that are going on there right now, the Cove and 95 Green Street. So just introduce yourself and your firm. And Peter Schubert, INEAD Architects. We do a lot of life science throughout the country, but particularly are focused in New York area. And I've been working with Nancy on life science in New York now for since Alexandria Properties. Yep. Peter was the design architect on the East River Science Park. Hi, everybody. John Cahill with JLL. I head up our life sciences practice group out of our Midtown office. Yeah. So, um, Peter, take us through the code. All right. Uh, I was uh, by your staff was uh, asked to do a little bit of a speed round. So this is going to be picture speaks a thousand <laughs> words. So let's go. Uh, the Cove, as you can see, has a fantastic site on the Jersey City at the end of what we call the Morrison Basin. It's about a 16-acre site. Next, please. Uh, you've seen this bio arc many times, but really it's all about connecting the sort of the two portals and the two uh, sort of gateways in Manhattan, really starting up at Columbia and even Einstein moving down through all the academic alley, west side, and then into the uh, Jersey City, which we view as both the gateway to New York as well as to the gateway to all the pharma in New Jersey. Next, please. Obviously, very well. Um, it's easy to get to by almost any uh, transportation. Uh, there's going to be ferry service, particularly to the cove, so that's very exciting. Next, please. And there's light rail that comes right to the campus, right? Right, mm -hmm. uh, adjacent to light rail. One of the things that's really uh, exciting is that Liberty Science has announced a new development that's going to be, I think, Nancy, what is it, 150,000 square feet? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be incubator space, but it really makes this whole area a part of a new science development. It really is the live, work, play community that I think everybody's looking for in, in uh, life science. And you know, in Manhattan, all the repositioning buildings, it's easy to get a little bit light on the amenities, uh, but because there's so much texture and, and landscape and urbanism around you. So as we move to the Cove, we're going to basically recreate this, but also we hope in a smart city and environmental way. Next, please. We've uh, developed kind of what is called the six pillars of really what a transformational community is all about. And really, I think today we're going to go through health, wellness, is it environmental sustainability and design for innovation? But Nancy, feel free to chime in. Yeah, and I would say if you know you can look these up on the Cove website. We've written white papers on all of them, and um, as and contributing firms as well. And these are all published on the Cove site. Next, please. So here we go, really, at the end of the basin in that, in that area that is about 16 acres. And as you can see, there's a number of different institutions and, and different science developments that have been emerged. I, but I do want to point out, as Jersey City becomes more and more entrepreneurial and exciting, it's going to be a new cultural center with the Pompidou Center. So really, a lot is happening in Jersey City. Mm -hmm. Next, please. Fun to look at the history of this site. Believe it or not, this is the cove back in like the 30s, 20s. Uh, you know, and really you can see what, just what the environment was like in Jersey City. And, and keep this map and, and this image in your mind as we move forward. Next, please. It's been going through, and, and Clay McPhail over at Argent has been, and along with Dresner Robbins, has been looking at really all the remediation for this site. It's in five years in the making, and the next slide is it's done, which is very exciting. It's, it's shovel ready. 
Nick. And I just, I want to add that um, one of the, I think another unique thing about this development is that this developer, Argent Ventures, uh, they assembled these parcels of land. Uh, you know, they were multiple parcels. They brought them together, rezoned, re-permitted the whole thing, and then cleaned them up. And they invested a lot of money in doing that without a real a firm understanding of what they were going to do with it when they got it done. And you heard um, Jersey City, you know, they're very grateful to them for actually taking the long run view and undertaking all of that remediation on what was a Brownsfield site. Yeah, so uh, you know, it's, it's a fantastic site, but one that obviously suffered from uh, some issues of remediation and it's ready to go, which is very exciting. In the middle of it, you'll see a, a wetland park that will emerge uh, that really uh, also Michael Van Valkenburg, who's done many parks in the Brooklyn area has worked on. Next, please. An interesting part of it, and I again think back to the earlier pieces of it, is that as a transformational community, this also has the opportunity to be one of the premier uh, sustainable communities as well. As it turns out, there's this uh, wastewater system that uh, is actually moving through the site that they're going to tap into. Next, please. They're going to tap through, in, through a method called aquathermy. And aquathermy, if you think geothermic, it's basically looking at wastewater uh, as a way of, of really just redu of, of getting the energy from it. And if, next, please. Uh, the exciting thing is, is that the blue line is the amount of energy that this aquathermy system will produce. The yellow line is actually what will support this new transformational community of 3 million square feet, half of which is going to be life science. Next, please. The site itself and the, what just incredible views of Manhattan. Off to the right, I just want to point out, is in also Liberty Park. It's actually about a 70 acres bigger than Central Park, which is about 800 acres. Next, please. Uh, skyline views for the residential. And then as you can start to see, a, a very pedestrian-oriented uh, development at the, uh, the base of the building. Next, please. What we'll look at is this is actually where the life science community will be. Next, please. And here's an aerial view of it. And it really is, has two aspects to it. In the lower right, you can see the sort of the new sort of eco park, which will be the centerpiece of it. And then on the northern edge of or north of that white building, which is the academic building, will be a street called Etna. Most of our retail and sort of urban sort of development will be along that street. Next, please. Mixed use development, the green is basically life science. The centerpiece is kind of an academic sort of building that Nancy can talk to if she wants. And then the blue will be a, a series of two high rise towers, which will be the signature and the skyline plus some low rise around the bottom and over the parking. Next, please. Here's the street, and again, you know, live, work, play. You know, the, the opportunity here really is to make an urban environment that'll have exhibition at the bottom, it'll have retail at the bottom, lobbies, and it really will be a lively environment that has a real urban sort of edge to it. Next, please. And then alternatively, the, the life science building itself has the opportunity to sort of inside out. I mean, I think in a post-COVID world, the opportunities for outdoor space are real and everybody's looking for it. So what we're proposing here is a series of terraces and open space that really will overlook the new sort of Morrison Creek. Next, please. Inside will be a, a series of academic uh, and sort of co-working spaces, uh, collaboration spaces. There'll be the normal sort of food service available in the initial phases until the retail kicks in. Next, please. The life science floor plates themselves are very simple and efficient. These are the basic layouts for lab. The dark blue is somewhat the support space, and the light is labs. More labs than they'll ever need on a floor plate, but as we, we uh, design our buildings to be as uh, lab-centric as possible. Next, please. And then the labs itself will have incredible views, particularly from the upper floors um, of the, of the uh, harbor in New York, and, as well as Manhattan. Next, please. And then, once again, you know, basically the cove. You know, it's going to be a transformational community around sort of a new ecosystem, environmental system, as well as creating a new urbane live-work-play environment. And the view from the skyline. Uh, everybody talks about amenities. This one's actually going to have boat slips that go with it. <laughs> <laughs> so next, please. And then again, from the, the uh, just a view from the waterfront, outdoor spaces galore, and then the retail. Thank you. Great. Um, You're on. 
Yeah, I mean, just think about it. This is going to be one of the first communities where, you know, you'll be able to, families will be able to live. You, you heard about SciTech City this morning and the um, STEM school, K-12, to that's going to be established there. The kids will be able to walk to school, you know, a block away, and they'll be able to go to work. And it's just, it's a nice contained environment. So and it's also running into a lot of the things that I think John has been working on. In yeah, the, in the absolutely. So John, uh, Jersey City is hopping. So tell us, you've got 95 Green, Amazon, lots going on there, right? Correct, correct. I cannot talk about the, uh, the second example there, but... Oh, here um, you go. Is this, are these your slides? This is one of our slides here uh, before I jump into the, uh, the pre-built suite. Um, so I rep my team represents 95 Green Street on behalf of Thor Equities. Um, we've been very interested and bullish on Jersey City for the last handful of years. Um, historically, I've always had a lot of clients in New Jersey um, and elsewhere ask, you know, are there any lab buildings in New Jersey, it, it specifically Jersey City? And the answer has always been no. Um, so when we found this building and this opportunity, we started leasing and marketing it on behalf of SJP Properties. Um, we transacted on the building because of the activity that we had, um, interest from New Jersey and New York companies. Um, long story short, we closed on that transaction before COVID, before the pandemic hit. Unfortunately, we were a little bit delayed in our, our launch of the property, uh, but we've been fully under construction since the beginning of uh, January of this year, and we're getting ready to deliver uh, this December. It's a, a 350,000 square foot building, eight stories, 45,000 square foot floor plate. Uh, one of the things that originally got us very excited about this, this building and this opportunity is um, all of the detailed spec that you need in a building to convert uh, it was very ideal. It was at a minimum 50, 60 percent already there uh, for a conversion. So we're pretty, uh, pretty optimistic. Unfortunately, the previous owner did not want to put the capex in for the base building work. So we're able to get the transaction done with Thor and we've been fully committed ever since then. It's a purpose built lab building. Uh, we do have a, a here highlighted on this floor plan is a 23,000 square foot pre-built suite. We are delivering that in December for occupancy in January of 2022. Uh, we're pretty excited about that. Just a couple of weeks ago, we had our first lease signed with Jersey City Medical Center. Uh, we've got a few different opportunities with this building. We can do building within a building because we do have two side entrances. And so we're working on leasing the, the building from the bottom up. Um, so we have deals right now out for lease, uh, two deals that might be closed within the next couple of weeks, uh, two 12,000 square foot lab deals. Uh, so early next year, we could have upwards of about four to five tenants occupying. So we're pretty excited about the, uh, the, the property, the project. Um, you know, historically, when I talk to clients and tenants and people that ask about Jersey City, they always ask, is there any lab space in New Jersey? So we're the first and only existing lab conversion that's happening. Um, you know, the one quick side story, there was a group actually at one point, a biotech company. There are biotech companies in Jersey City, but they just have office space. Uh, one biotech company at one point in a Regis in the middle of the night brought fume hoods into their, their Regis space. Uh, they ended their tenancy pretty quickly after that. <laughs> uh, so this is you know, the, first, uh, the first lab building in Jersey City. And we've got tremendous interest and activity, um, again, from groups all around the region. And we're just excited to be delivering this project. Yeah, you know, it was really interesting to me when we did the Cove launch event at the end of September. And we had um, Claris Biotherapeutics and Apprentice IO and several of the companies that are in Jersey City, it's really a budding subcluster mm -hmm. there um, with, you know, just pure startups like what you're talking about all the way to Organon, which is a spinoff, publicly traded spinoff from Merck, five, Fortune 500 company, uh, 100,000 square feet in 2020. Hmm. Um, and now Amazon is taking 400,000 square feet for their new headquarters there, right? Yes, uh, that's in the news, um, <laughs> but the Organon deal was, was definitely very interesting and important. That's uh, you know, a big pharma spinoff from Merck um, coming to the waterfront, you know, so it highlights the trend of the suburban to urban market. And uh, that was definitely a labor force play. They were right. very interested in being close to Manhattan. And you know, this building being a former Colgate manufacturing building, uh, the proximity to downtown and proximity to J Labs, Genome Center, mm -hmm. Bio Labs are all very, you know, very attractive um, mm. um, you know, parts of the project. So. Right, right. So this is a community where tech and life science is coming together with culture, as Peter said. Mm -hmm. The Pompidou Center just announced that it's going to locate its first satellite um, program in North America in Jersey City, which is quite the 
quite the announcement. So anyway, thank you for sharing all of that. Appreciate it. Thank you.